as a copywriter and a content writer, both for my own business and other businesses, I have learned so many ninja tricks to figuring out how to never run out of things to say. I've kind of always wanted to make this video, so I am so excited about it today. I'm bringing you tested, proven strategies that I lean on as a writer. All right, let's talk about copywriting. So on my channel, I typically talk more about sales copywriting more so than content marketing copywriting, but they're very closely connected. As I realized I needed to create more and more content in stories to market my own business as well as other businesses, I started to put a lot of time into figuring out what strategies worked, so I always had words at the ready. About a year ago, I really hit a stride with my writing process, and that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Additionally, I am coming back from three months of maternity leave and within those three months I took 28 days off Instagram which was so great so again during that time I had to figure out and realize that I needed a way to catalog all of these thoughts that I have for when I come back James Wedmore recently said on his podcast that for many of us online entrepreneurs, content creation is our paintbrush. I talk a little bit more to creative entrepreneurs and artists and wedding industry entrepreneurs, but I think the same thing goes for us because no matter what, we have to create a lot of content marketing here in 2019, right? It's just part of running a business in this day and age, but I think done well, the writing portion of it can be a really fun creative outlet for you. I also think in 2019 with all the noise and cooking company out there that quality over a quantity is really the name of the game these days when it comes to all the content. Let me know below in the comments if you agree with me. I've noticed a lot of the entrepreneurs that I look up to have put this into practice themselves. For example, Beth Kirby of Local Milk, a friend and a client and an absolute Instagram queen, um, explained to me one time that it's a little bit better on something like Instagram to post when you've really got something to say instead of worrying so much about getting that daily post up, which if you think about it makes sense. If you're slapping up content without a lot of thought behind it, that gives somebody an opportunity to remember that they wanna unfollow you, right? Whereas if you're putting out great quality content, they're more likely to stick around. I hope that makes sense. Let's go ahead and dive into hack number one. Story mine your own life with a story bank. The first little ninja trick that I have for you is something I do at the end of every day. I look back and I try to think of at least one story that happened to me that day and I add it to my story bank. These little stories Stories and anecdotes can be great kickoffs, illustration points, cautionary tales, or ways to just communicate with story. But if you're like me, trying to figure out a story on the spot to illustrate a point you have is super hard sometimes. So let's go ahead and start collecting them. Let me give you an example of this in action so you can see what I mean when I say collect a story. Last night, I had just one of those entrepreneur days, if you know what I mean, and my husband sat down on the coffee table, folded his hands, and he looked at me and he said, Ashlyn, just because the Patriots don't win the Super Bowl every single year doesn't mean that they're not a great team. So why is that, Wes? That would be an example of the kind of anecdote I'm talking about. Something that happened, do you see now how I can take that and use it as an educational or an illustration point or even just to encourage somebody else? A pro tip here is to sort your stories. I learned this from my speaking coach Jess Rasdell who one time recommended to me that I sort my stories into different categories to make them easier to find later. As you're pulling together your stories, think about what could be an example of a cautionary tale or what illustrates overcoming a problem. I took it further and started to think about what are some holiday stories that I can use and share in my content during certain holidays or what stories have to do with my eating disorder. Starting this practice of being on the lookout of any little thing that happens to you during the day that you can then turn into content later on can be a great way to add to your writing fodder bank. So first things first, I want you to get in this habit of writing at least one daily story that happened to you or maybe you would rather hit pause on this video right now, pull out a piece of paper and just write down as many little anecdotes and stories that you can think of. I'm gonna show you another tip in a little while that may give you some ideas on how you can house this information, but let's go ahead and move on to the second tip. I found this app recently called the Brain Spark app, and it is a fairly inexpensive way to get a lot of great writing prompts. It's super simple to use, and I will link it down below, but essentially this is a creativity app with more than 250 creativity prompts. They call them cards to get you out of your rut. This is not endorsed by them at all. I just found it recently one night when I 
I couldn't sleep and I thought it was so great. Now I'm pretty anti-notifications when it comes to my own phone, but I have liked that I can set a writing prompt to notify me at a certain time every single day. I spoke in a recent video about morning pages and journaling and getting into that habit. And if you're stuck and never know what to say, this could be a great way to get started. These ideas can then feed into content for your email newsletter or social media post. The third thing that I started doing that has made a big difference for me is going bananas with an organizational system for my writing fodder and ideas. I am an efficiency nut and you guys have probably heard me talk before about creating a system for housing your words. That methodology, which I call the Ashland Wright's copy banking system, works really well for pulling together different content ideas that you can then use on whatever platform you need to create content for. Some people collect postcards, some people collect wine, I collect quotes and notes from the books that I read. Actually, I probably collect wine too. But the nerddom is okay because I am a writer and the well-worn tools that I lean on are the these quotes and notes from different things that I'm reading that can all help remodel my brain and my writing. When it comes to apps, Evernote is my favorite external brain for keeping track of learnings from books, courses, quotes, etc. The biggest key that I think a lot of entrepreneurs forget when they start to voraciously consume books is that for every one book you choose to read, you're basically ignoring 10,000 others, right? There is a total difference in consuming books as a reader versus reading diligently to seek wisdom. So starting a practice of recording notes from things that I read has really grown me both as a reader but also as a writer. Again, I love Evernote. It is an app I absolutely lean on to make sure I never run out of things to say. That brings me to the next trick, story mining for ideas in Pinterest and iTunes. What I want you to do here is to go into these different apps and look at the titles that you can find. Now they don't have to be just related to your topic, but I want you to see what they spark. And I want you to be able to mad lib them a little bit and see how you can fit something that you want to talk about into the title and use that title as your writing prompt. The trick here, I don't want you to go listen to that podcast or go read the article that you've seen the title of that you want to write about. I want you to just use it to spark something in you and to see what may be there inside of you that you wanna talk about. You'll know you've hit one when you see a title and you think, you know what, I have something to say about that. Or again, can you change the words in the title around a little bit to talk about something that you've already been wanting to talk about? Now, the next thing is to make sure that you are sharing content that you've specifically been asked for. If you've noticed so far in the tips that I've been sharing, I haven't really asked you to do this yet, but this is how you are going to know that you're adding value to your readers' lives, how you create that content Content and that copy that really gets engagement. Now, shout out to my copywriting for creatives students here. Y'all know that this is something I call your client's voice hacking system. Really making sure that you are trained up and you know how to survey and put your ear to the ground and really hear what it is that people wanna hear from you. This is not always the cute, fun, Instagrammable part of writing for your business, but this researching, this grunt work, so to speak, is where the magic is. This is the part of your content marketing copywriting that really gets your ideal clients to start listening to what you have to say for sales purposes for you. A section of your word banking system needs to be dedicated to these questions that you're getting asked about what you do or your service itself. Another little secret here is to figure out how you can evergreen this. If you really wanna be savvy when it comes to not running out of things to say, see if you can somehow automate this system. Let me give you a few examples. So maybe you have a landing page that leads to a question field and you always have those questions coming in, or you have an inquiry form that has a spot for the number one question somebody wants to ask you. Maybe you have in your welcome sequence a spot for people to hit reply and let you know something that they've been wondering. Or maybe you have an Instagram story in your highlights where people can always give you ideas for content. The conversations that you have with people when you open the door for them to reach out and ask you questions are amazing. This is also how you can build real relationships with people through these apps in this online world. I have loved being at conferences in person and getting to talk to a student or a former client or customer and know that I answered a question, something that they asked me through a piece of content I created. That's how you're gonna start adding value. The trick with never running out of things to say is to plan ahead, of course. Y'all know I am an efficiency nut, but upping how I organize all of the different writing that I could use as fodder in my content has helped me really organically grow that bank of things I have to say so I can turn around and use them in email newsletters, in 
Instagram captions, and so on and so forth. Plus, if you don't know, I also have a free workbook guide to getting your brand voice defined. To help get you some bonus tips on everything I've talked about today, look down below for a link to that freebie workbook to finding your brand voice. Well, I hope this was as fun for you as it was for this little word nerd right here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and also share this video. The more you do that, the more I can get content how-tos just like this into your hands. Also hit subscribe below so I can see you in the next video.